thank you everybody for joining. I can see there's a few more people coming in the room, which is great news. It's good to see some new new names as well. A couple of a uh, couple of guys that have been with us and a few few investors there as, as well. Excellent. So nice to see everybody uh, on board. Thank you very much for your time um, on this uh, this evening. So yeah, so let let's start off where where we are in terms of the subject. So how short term investments are key to beating the recession. So I think ultimately it's quite an unusual title because you know normally when you're talking about recessions or you mention the word recession and typically you're not looking at you know how to invest or where them investment those investment pots are this this webinar has been put together really because myself and john who i'm going to introduce shortly um we spend a lot of time talking to investors and there are so many kind of different opinions so many different ideas and suggestions of what's happening and how unusual the market is and, and generally we find it quite interesting speaking to different investors we thought it'd be great to kind of put something together share those ideas share those thoughts um, and also listen to other people's opinions and thoughts and see how it can happen how it might affect investments what investment opportunities are out there um, and, and that's what this is based on so it's going to be property led because ultimately we are property people so if you know about sourced already you'll, you'll be aware of that if not, we're going to give you an introduction into source and who we are. Um, but more importantly, we're going to talk about um, the market, uh, where we are at the moment, what we see is going to happen um, and how that affects investments. And obviously how we can beat recession and look at short term investments as well. So we'll jump in to introduce ourselves properly. So my name is Stephen Moss. I'm the managing director of Source Group, so I'll, I'll give you a quick introduction shortly to, to the Source Group, who we are uh, and, as a group and a team. Um, so my experience and the reason I, I'm kind of sat here chatting away um, is I've been in the property uh, and investment sector for 21 years, um, so an awful long time. Um, I'm looking at this more, and one of the reasons that John's asked me to kind of jump on this webinar is I'm looking at this more from a point of view of actually as a, a developer or investor. Uh, and to you know, given the feedback that I'm hearing from different people and the the uh, the general feedback from from the market as well, so it's quite interesting having been through recession of sort of 2008 2009, how this is how this is different. And I suppose when you speak to people that have been through multiple recessions, you, they always kind of feedback that they are different. You know, the the crash in in sort of uh, late 80 1980, sorry, that was very different to 2008 2009. Um, and this seems to be very different as well. It seems to be a very different approach uh, as to what's happening and, and how the market's playing out as well. So we're going to touch on some of those points. I'd like to introduce you to John Wilson. Um, John, if you could introduce yourself and let everybody know your role and, and what you do yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been working with Steve with our investors now for around about three years. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I'll speak with investors that are looking at investing with source capital, looking at investing in other different vehicles. And through the questions that I've had over probably the last four or five months, really, um, regarding are we in a recession, are we moving into a recession, what are your thoughts, what are your plans, what are source capital doing to potentially change how they operate? And I thought it would be a great idea to, to bring together current investors, which I can see quite a few on uh, the webinar today, and also new faces to to have that discussion really and it's part of the the next slide that we'll go on to and what is the reason for it and what are we looking to do uh, but that that's the main reason why i thought let's connect with steve let's bring him into the webinar room from my day-to-day -day role a lot of investors have a lot of different thought processes on what they want to achieve and how they're going to achieve that and the recession and the way that this recession's leading and how we're going to get there and we'll talk about why we're talking about an in, uh, investing when there's potentially a recession coming and it's quite a unique mix of of everything that's happening and that's one of the reasons really that uh, that we thought we'd bring it together so we'll go through the slides as we go any questions that you've got let me know let Steve know and let's run through it yeah fantastic excellent um I can see questions popped up already we need to see your face John I mean, you know, it's uh, they must have heard how good looking you are, John. So, ah, oh, they, they must uh, have done. We've got yeah. an anonymous <laughs> attendee, yeah, uh, who's asked that one. So, 99% chance it's a, yeah, a sourced employee. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, fantastic. So, we'll jump into this. So, 
first of all, before we, we go into obviously talking about investments, um, it's important information. It's important that we state that this webinar, not financial advice. During this webinar, we will look into investment opportunities from source capital. These opportunities are for, for, for sophisticated, sorry, high net worth individuals. Your capital is at risk and you may lose all you lend. Pitch for investments are not covered by FSCS. Legal charges secured against UK property. Property values may go up or down. That's obviously a point we're going to discuss. Uh, investments are illiquid. Um, so it's important we, we're you know, completely open and transparent. Uh, as a business, we are FCA regulated, so we want to make sure that we're very clear with people. Um, in terms of agenda, we've discussed this around the office uh, throughout the last couple of days. And, you know, it, this isn't really a set agenda in terms of these are the five points. This is ultimately what we want you to cover and what you want to understand. There are elements of that, but actually it's a discussion between two people that deal with investors on a day-to-day -day basis, not just in property, but in other areas as well, because people do talk to us about how they feel the market's going to uh, affect their stocks and shares and other things. Um, and it's great to kind of share those experiences um, using the platform that we've got and, uh, and op openly talking on the webinar as well. Um, an introduction to Sourced. So for anybody that's not uh, come across ourselves, so uh, we're a group of businesses. So we've actually got four uh, divisions, if you like. So we've got Source Property, Source Capital, Source Franchise and Source Developments. This website, this webinar is being uh, presented by Source Capital. Um, to understand how the business works, it's quite a unique structure that we have in the business. Um, source property is a, um, well, actually start with source franchise is probably a little bit easier, but yeah, we've, we've got a, a network of over 170 franchisees across the UK. So people that we work with, we train, we support, we provide leads with, um, and we help them to build their property portfolios to buy and sell properties or to develop properties as well. So a, a real kind of mix and, and variety. Um, if a franchisee finds an opportunity, they've got two options. Typically, they can either package it and sell it to an investor. Alternatively, they might want to do the project themselves. If they decide to go down the route of packaging it and selling it to an investor, then it goes through our property arm, so source property, and, and that uploads it to our phone app. So if, if anybody's seen our phone app on uh, Apple and Android, um, it's free download and there's new properties added on there every single day, investment opportunities. And um, if they decide that they want to um, fund the property and do it themselves, then it comes to our capital team and that's our peer-to-peer -peer lending platform, which is an FCA regulated platform. So we then go through, our credit team go through the whole due diligence of the property and the project. Um, and then we put it onto our platform for investors that can invest into that. Uh, to get a, a return um, and obviously we'll, we'll touch on a little bit more information there as well we've also got our development team as well and this is kind of where we we the, the kind of journey we take people through so our franchisees if they find a project that's either too big or they're not interested in doing it themselves but it's a really good project then potentially we'll do it as a development team so we've got developments all over the uk and um, we're building new build houses apartments conversions and um, lots of sort of different variety uh, of builds um, and again, that kind of gives us a real insight into actually what's happening in, across the UK because we're not focused on just sort of the northwest or the northeast. We've actually got stuff northeast, northwest, midlands, southwest, you know, dotted all over the UK. And it gives us a real variety of what's happening in certain areas. What are the what are the concerns? What what are investors looking for? How's that market changed a little bit? You know, are the um, are the returns that the properties there were previously uh, generating? Are they still interested in, uh, enough for investors to continue to purchase? Or are investors' appetites changing? Um, and that, there's some of the points that we're going to talk about uh, today, just to kind of touch on those and get a better understanding. So that's an overview of who we are, um, the business and the group. Uh, I'm going to jump into this. Feel free to ask any questions throughout the presentation. So we've got the uh, Q&A. Um, and we've got a live chat on here as well. So part of Zoom's feature, you can just click on that, throw any questions into it about any particular slides. Um, at the end, there'll be the opportunity to ask any questions as well, if you prefer to do that. And we'll also have contact details for John. So if anybody's got any queries, they're more than welcome to jump on and, uh, and speak to him directly. If it's, a, if it's a bit more specific or about your needs, uh, feel free to, to uh, talk to about that as well. So 2022, um, a recession that doesn't play by the economic rule book. So what do we mean by that? What we mean is ultimately 
you know, typically when you're going into a recession or you are on the verge of a recession, interest rates would be low or lowered to encourage borrowing and spending. However, we're obviously in a, a unique position where actually interest rates are being increased. Um, employment, we have full employment at the moment. So again, typically when you enter in a recession or you, you as kind of some people consider it was already to be in recession, you know, typically employment or unemployment is, is rising. And that's not happening at the moment. Another quite unique position is the fact that um, there are cash rich companies out there and previously in recessions that hasn't been the case cash has been very difficult to get hold of um and also investors are still very active um you know, it surprised me today i i went to visit one of our sites where we're building 10 new build uh, detached houses so almost a quarter of a million pound houses um, and we have viewings today and it kind of made me think about the, the webinar in terms of you know people are still out there people are still looking and you know, it is not as an investment point of view, but just actually generally in the background, there's, there's people still being active in the market, um, which is quite quite nice to see. And um, I know a couple of, well, probably about six weeks ago now, I went to a, a conference and they had a, a bank panel there and the bank panel was sat there and they were kind of feeding back. And this was just literally probably about two days after uh, interest rates had gone up and, you know, the banking structure had changed. Um, and the guys were sat there from uh, Barclays uh, through to, I think it was about five or six different banks. And they were kind of sat there with their hands up saying, look, actually, we're in a really unusual position in terms of we've got more cash than we've ever had. However, we've also got a risk a risk matrix or you know, we're driven by risk now. And that's what's changing our, our, our uh, lending or our criteria and, and what we're looking for. So um, very unique position in terms of... Uh, entering you know 2022 um and how it's different from other recessions something we've been talking about john isn't it in terms of you know the general uh, uniqueness of this position absolutely and it's one of those strange times where you look at the differences between today and potentially moving into a recession which doesn't really have a clear definition of what it is um the general consensus is that an economic downturn uh, over a period of two quarters. But there's many different uh, theories on what exactly a recession is. Uh, this kind of alludes to the, the title of how it doesn't play into the, the general rule book because you would have unemployment across the country. You would have uh, banks in particular with very little capital to deploy. You would have uh, a lot of potential investors that we do with um, who aren't looking to invest. However, investors are still very active. You would have the housing market, which is extremely dry, both of stock and uh, also of uh, potential buyers. And we're not really seeing that across the board. And that's one of the reasons why it's so unique of a position. And nobody really knows what to do. Do you sit there on your hands and not invest even though you've got the capital to do so? But you, you have to invest because inflation's rising so high and we'll, we'll get on to the next slide regarding inflation. But we're looking at above double digits again uh, from October. Um, and you, you think I need to do something, but do I go into an asset that's going to be a longer term asset that I might be stuck with when the recession hits? Or do I go into something a little bit shorter term? Do I hold the capital? So there's so many variables to look at and so many different theories from investors and different theories from yourself as business owners and property developers that we kind of need to explore. And the conversations that I have with investors kind of picks up on that constantly. Yeah, I think it's fair to say as well, a lot of, a lot of investors we're talking to, you know, they, they see in the media and they're seeing that, you know, everyone's talking about recession, recession, but they're not fully feeling that because I suppose in some, it depends as well in what area you're working in because, you know, particularly myself as a developer, you know, I've found that not that we're in recession, but I've found that costs of materials have been going up and up and up and up, cost of labor, et cetera. So <clears> we've been going through that for the last three years, you know, and that, so it's already been tough on that, that side already. Yeah, that's kind of been weighed out by the fact that house prices have had this fantastic growth and whether that's a bubble or, you know, th there may be a correction. That's another kind of argument that's coming to face. But 
in reality, people have already been feeling it in different areas, haven't they? You know, cost of living is a great example yeah. that we've felt this cost of living for not not just suddenly, but over the past couple of years, it's been affecting us and affecting us. Um, what is, you know, in your opinion, what is currently driving inflation? Um, so it, it's quite an interesting point because you know, it's the same thing that's, that's driven it, as you say, for months. I think you touched on it uh, a moment ago in terms of double digits. So in October, 11.1. Um, I know it's it's gonna it's gonna mean there's gonna be changes potentially again. We're talking about a further increase, aren't they, uh, on Thursday? But looking actually what what's driving it, it comes down to the key things of you know I don't think it's just limited to these. And I'm sure the people that are, are watching and listening to this will have further comments to add because you know the war in Ukraine yeah definitely driving it. Um, obviously that that's also uh, I was gonna say fueling the fuel prices, but you know that, that that's obviously affecting that and, and the energy crisis. Food supply again, it's, it's driven from that. But I think we've still got the after effects of the likes of COVID, even Brexit. Nobody, no, nobody likes to say that word, but you know, in reality, we're still seeing some elements of that filter through, and it's this kind of big cauldron of everything together. Um, it is pushing inflation and, and pushing it, you know, into this sort of level of. I think is it what fourteen year high? I think about yeah, it's, like a, that. it's a bit of blend of different issues and effects that are coming together and you've got the supply issues from China currently going into lockdowns uh, in individual cases to trying to reduce uh, COVID, uh, shutting down complete areas and that's having a massive effect yet again on manufacturing uh, and supply coming through uh, to the UK and coming back to a point that we made about uh, how this differs to other recessions, there's still the demand for products, there's still the demand for services and that also continues driving this inflation being so high because you've got a lack of products coming through, but you've got the demand for them. You've got a lack of uh, fuel coming through, going into a very cold winter, as we can already tell. And that's leading to an energy crisis. You've got food supply issues, uh, mainly due to the grain issues that are coming through from the war in Ukraine. And again, like you said, it's a great phrase to use. It's a cauldron of issues which... Uh, driving inflation to a 14-year high. So, yeah, quite a, quite a difficult one to interpret. And it goes back to the point of investors need to find a way to beat inflation while also being as careful and uh, assessing every deal in the right way while also going into a recession. So, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, it's interesting. There was a, a message that came through a couple of minutes ago and we kind of touched on it part of... Uh, the the general flow of the conversation, but it was uh, quite a good one regarding how are your current uh, uncompleted projects affected by the interest rate rises and also the supply issues. Um, so, and then there's a follow on from that. But from your point of view as a developer, how have you found it so far, Steve? Obviously, I know some of the deals that you look to refinance. You're now looking to sell the asset. Some of the assets that you potentially look to sell, you're looking to refinance. So, it'd be great to hear how you've been affected over uh, such a long period. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, um, you know, my my personal opinion, this is what I've, I've been talking to investors about for the past sort of six weeks, which feels like six years. Um, in, in reality, what I've found is over the last six weeks is I've had to redo all the work that I've done over the last six months. And what, what I mean by that is as a developer, you're always working sort of six months, 12 months in advance, whether it's, you know, you're working towards getting planning permission and starting that site or you're working towards the build and finishing the site and the exit or something along those lines and and th th this kind of it was more the rates really that that had the with a catalyst that, that changed that in terms of you know we had sites that sites that we were right okay we're going to retain these sites because the yield these sites we're going to sell these sites but we're going to sell them to um either first-time buyers or you know, and that's all changed in terms of particularly the ones that we're going to retain these sites because now actually retaining them with the interest rates that we're going to pay for the mortgages, the, the, the profit's not there. And I think landlords and investors from a property point of view feeling that right across the UK. Next year, a lot of mortgage brokers that I speak to um, next year that, you know, they're, they're kind of excited, but they're also really fearful for next year because they're excited that there are huge amounts of remortgages that are going to be due. So end of fixed year uh, terms. I think there's a statistic going around uh, a couple of days ago, I think it was last week, we were at the uh, 
that, that annual event and uh, it was something like next year is due to be the highest you know, you know the end of the highest fixed refinance period or so, something along those so it, it means ultimately there's going to be a huge amount of remortgages due while people go on to the, the variable and obviously that drives a lot of fear because people don't want to be on, on a variable unsure if it's going to continue to go up um so yeah that, that was kind of the, the the driver for me was actually we had a lot of stock that we were going to refinance we're now not we're going to have to sell who we're going to sell it to because you know is that market still there at the moment it is you know it's quite unusual because there's still a shortage of properties you know i'm personally looking to move house um and nothing's changed over the last six months now it, it could be that actually this has all happened and then we've come into december and in reality coming into december which is a quiet month anyway we're not going to see the true effects until the new year uh, from it and, and houses may start flooding on and you know it, it's probably unrealistic but that, that's that's i know that's some people's opinion of what could happen um oh right sorry just a comment there from tony thanks tony it's a 40 year high inflation uh, level so i think i must have 14 apologies 40 years so yeah which is quite scary isn't it, when you look at it that way um so another question that's come through how are you your current incomplete projects affected by the interest rate rises so that's following really your question isn't it uh john yeah um, so again the the follow-on from that one the the later part of that is love to hear about any projects not completed and are now with administration uh, administrators so yeah. from our point of view at source capital we don't have any projects which are currently with administrators we don't have any projects that look to be a negative effect on our loan book we've got nothing which is potentially going to be a bad debt um in terms of projects that aren't completed uh, steve mentioned some of the the changes in tactic in terms of sale to refinance refinance to sale etc and um, there's a couple of projects with slight overspends due to um increased labor cost increased material costs but they've all been managed extremely well uh, from our point of view as a source capital platform and uh, from Steve's point of view as a developer, again, none of his deals are, are sat with the administrators and none of them look like they're not going to be completed with a successful finish uh, in the near term, really. No, I think, I think that comes down to, you know, when we talked about the company structure at the very beginning, um, you know, we're quite a unique structure. So where we differ from, you know, every other kind of lender out there is actually we only lend money to our franchisees. So we don't lend money externally. So it's not, we don't have a process like most lenders where they go through an online application form and you know um, it, it's kind of it's kind of automated process and then they lend money based on that ours is that you know we know the the borrowers very well the franchisees so therefore we know what, what experience they've got what skill sets they're at what level we're at so if a franchisee comes to us and says i've got this project it's new build 24 houses yet we know they've only been doing refurbs then it's easy for us to say no and that's one of the nice things about the franchise network is ultimately the franchisees know what level they've got to be at to, to gain, you know, the additional funding or go to the next level. So um, having that that relationship really helps. Having the support throughout the project really helps. And ultimately as well, you know, the, the, it's, it's a credit to, to the credit team as well because they're a very experienced team that, that makes sure that we work hard with. It's not to say some of the projects obviously um, take a little bit longer. That, of course that happens that that is natural but you know they are they, they do get finished and repaid and you know we're not we're, we're in that fortunate position that actually uh we're not having to have things uh repossessed or anything like that so how how do we look at it now in terms of the market changing then it's a great question for that because you know what we've had to do is sit down and say okay what what is the exit on these projects and you know how realistic is that exit one of the nice things is ultimately the projects that we put forward typically there's more than one exit so you're able to work on that to say right okay you know that exit exit one isn't going to work or quite a lot of lenders with us will sorry borrowers with us will also work on two exits themselves so you'll often find that people will be getting a remortgage going through while they're trying to sell the property and it just gives that clarity and comfort that you know if the if the sale takes longer then the remortgage will kick in and repay the loan as well so and that it, it's having multiple options really as, as we go through um, so let's jump on to the next one. So navigation of current landscape. So I think we, we've kind of covered a lot of this really in the earlier uh, discussion because, you know, the current landscape we've talked about where we are in terms of it's an unusual landscape and what the different changes are. 
you know, what have we changed as a business or what are we advising investors to change in terms of actually look at your due diligence process, not just your due, your due diligence process, but actually your risk matrix. Now, every investor has an element of risk matrix, whether they're detailed or whether they're not very detailed, they'll still have an element of looking at that as a risk and taking into consideration the current market. Um, we've actually, one of our, uh, uh, our investors who, is an absolutely fantastic guy. Um, released a book um, which is on Amazon, um, and we'll send out. We'll send a link out actually uh, following this with a copy of the recording. Um, but he's put a checklist of things in to check um, before you you kind of invest in in certain things, and that that's great because ultimately, it, even if you've not got a risk uh, matrix there, then it helps you put one together. Um, any more comments on that yourself, John? No, it's uh, similar to what we, we've spoke about so many times. It's uh, maybe a change of tack from developers and uh, borrowers, but also a change of tack from investors looking at different strategies that they may not have employed before. And again, the, the title of this and why we've had so many people on is a way to look at short-term loans and how they can potentially offer an option to invest during uh, a recession or high inflation, whichever way you look at it, or a mix of both. And you kind of look at the other options. You've got options of keeping money in the bank, sat there idle, not really doing much. It's earning a bit of interest now since the rates went up. You've got stocks and shares. Generally, going into a recession, it's potentially not the best time to be looking at stocks and shares. However, there are big winners at the minute, such as your gas companies, your energy companies, et cetera. And we'll look and explore how short-term loan, uh, loans can help navigate this landscape of of what we're dealing with currently and a lot of the investors that i deal with have traditionally started uh, well started as bricks and mortar investors just buying buy to let properties and and that was really it but now over the last few years in particular they've looked at different strategies to allow them to still be relatively flexible but have their money working for them because it may be that in a few years time they want to change tactic again completely but it allows them to diversify and send their money to work while not being tied in for a long period of time. And you've got the issues of high interest rates. So you buy to let industry, we've done a webinar from the source franchise point of view in the past, looking at is uh, buy to let dead and how that works and operates. Obviously there's still massive benefits to be made, but your HMO investors are dealing with the energy crisis and needing to put their rates up per room a lot higher. They're also dealing with potentially council tax coming in. So investing in property in a different way has become more and more popular with investors. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, like you say, short-term investment, which we'll, we'll, we'll look at as we go through this. So, um, so yeah, touching on obviously one of the key things, beating, uh, you know, investing to beat inflation during the recession. So, um, you know, one point you've just touched on there, John, I think it's really good to, to kind of uh, to touch on again or to, to expand on, sorry, is um, particularly banks. So um, we, we're seeing a lot of people that are now, you know, now starting to utilise ICES with banks or savings accounts with banks because previously and historically over the last so many years, it's been that banks are repaying you what, 0.2% or 0.1%. Yeah. You know, it, it's a ridiculous uh, return. And now people are starting to get, you know, what, two percent and it's starting to rise and starting to rise which is fantastic and it gives that level of comfort what we're seeing what what i'm seeing certainly and what, what we talked about john uh, with the team is you know we're seeing that but we're only seeing it at a certain level because what we're finding is investors are still wary of the banks in terms of only so much is protected um and ultimately there are no other assets behind that so that that's one area and secondly they know that that raise can't continue 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 we know interest rates can't just continue to grow and continue to grow there is going to be further steps but there is going to be a ceiling limit to that isn't there because um it affects everything else and it's a real kind of fine balance of, of meeting that to make sure that um people are comfortable and happy with what they're investing in you know and if they do invest into in, in you know the likes of banks as an example it's still not beating inflation you're still not getting the return it's a better return than what it was actually you're still you're not better off with what's what's actually going on in the bigger picture are you yeah absolutely so let's uh, let's delve into it then how can they potentially beat inflation yeah 
Well, one option is obviously short-term property development loans. So this is something that you know we'd like to put forward from from our side. So from a peer-to-peer -peer side, um, you know, what is a short-term property development loan? So I think you're probably best, John. I know you speak to investors about this every day. Um, to to expand it, expand on that. Yeah, absolutely. There's many different ways that you can invest into uh, property on a short term, and what we do at Source Capital is slightly traditional way of doing it. It's a first charge investment over a short period of uh, time where there's an increase in value to that property. So uh, property development could be anything. It could be a refurbishment. It could be a title split where you're changing a block of flats which are under one title under uh, into multiple different titles and either refinancing them or selling them on. It could be a new build development. It could be a commercial to residential conversion. <clears throat> Anytime a developer is looking for uh, funding for that development as as long as they're part of our franchise we'll assess that deal to make sure that we're comfortable with it that deal could be generally six to 18 months a short term and there'll be a period of a build and then there'll be a period of a sale or refinance uh, at the back of that so later down uh, the line of uh, this webinar we'll talk about what securities in place and we'll talk about the types of different developments but that's just an overall picture really into what a short-term loan is uh, with sourced it's generally six to 24 uh, 18 months potentially up to 24 months and that is looking at a property increasing in value and we would raise capital for that and there'll be an interest payable for that investment into that loan fantastic excellent hopefully some of the people on here have heard it before some of the key benefits so of uh, investing into uh, property development loans are security which john mentioned what we'll touch on shortly i don't know if you want to expand on these points now john um, uh, yeah so there'll be uh, we'll, we'll jump into a few of them a few of them we've already spoke about but security yeah. there's many different forms of security when you're investing in property development loans uh, first charge is your most senior level of debt uh, so that is that you'll be repaid before anybody else as uh, rights for repossession there could be uh, just a company debenture in place there could be a second charge which ranks behind a first charge so you're repaid uh, laterally after uh, the interest and the capital has been repaid on the first charge there could just be an equity investment uh, directly into uh, the company that's doing the the borrowing there could be a personal guarantee in place or there could be a combination uh, of a few of those factors and security methods in place And it, obviously, we only focus as a business. We are purely just first charge in terms of the, the loans that are offered on the platform. That's um, right. Yeah. So to give people an understanding, regulation. So um, there are platforms out there that are un unregulated. Now, if there are reasons for that. It's very difficult to get. You've got to make sure you've got the full procedures, policies, uh, experience in place, um, and capital support as well. So. We are FCA regulated um, and we're very proud of it. It took us a long time to achieve um, and it makes sure that obviously we're doing the reporting correctly. Um, there's all that's in place and, you know, ultimately we, we're keeping up to date with what's happening in the market and the changes in the market by being part of this, uh, this the regulator as well. So um, stability. So having some stability is certainly a really strong word in, in this market that we're in now. Um, so making sure that, you know, it's a little bit different from investing into sort of stocks and shares that can can jump quite quickly in terms of value. Uh, whereas typically with property, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting property can't go down. Of course, it can go down. What what you tend to find with property development loans is you'll have levels of equity. So your loan to value will, you know, as an example, the maximum loan to value will go to is 70%. And the idea behind that then is the 30% cushion. So that you know it's there to give some stability that actually if the market changes um it has to change by more than 30 percent to eat away at the actual capital uh, that was invested into it if we went right up to 70 percent a lot of loans that aren't 70 percent i know we've got a lot currently available uh, which is 60 percent loan to value um to give you an example interest another big benefit so um for ourselves um we we pay uh, an interest of up to 12% per annum. So it depends on the level that you invest at. So if you invest at less than £20,000 uh, into the project, it's 10% per annum. If you invest more than £20,000, it's 12% per annum. So 
it just depends on, on what level you're investing at. But it, it's a great return at the 12%. It's uh, an inflation beating. You know, we can still keep that on uh, on our, our title, I suppose. Um, but it, it's a great return, you know, and that's the uh, that's the key driver behind it. Um, flexibility, do you want to expand on these two, John? Flexibility, diversification? Yeah, so back to the, the long terms, really. Uh, the flexible approach to investing uh, into something which is six to 18 months means that you're able to start to plan out what you're wanting to do. And you can look at a longer term strategy within short term loans. Uh, so looking at reinvestments over a longer period of time, you can look at in 18 months when the capital and uh, interest is due for repayment, then I might look at a different strategy. It could be a great way to park that capital while earning interest for a short period of time. And again, I use the example because a lot of our uh, people watching here today, I can, I can see quite a few names, which are property investors, as well as uh, investors in short term loans. And the key difference is when you're buying a property, you're generally in that property for buy to let for about 10 to 15 years. You've got the capital growth of that asset, which is great. You've got the uh, residual income coming through uh, monthly or quarterly, depending on what it is and where it is. And that's fantastic. But you, you're quite rigid in that, uh, that setup of that investment portfolio. So if the market does change over the next six, 12, 18 months, which we're certain it will, then you, you're likely in there for a very long period of time. Uh, and diversification, short-term loans, generally you're not, uh, you're not looking at investing a huge amount of capital per project or per development. You can diversify into different styles of developments, different developers, different platforms if you're utilizing platforms, uh, direct third-party loans to developers. You can do quite a lot with short-term lending in the property space. And you don't have to put in hundreds of thousands in each individual deal. You can spread that over many, many deals. Yeah, exactly. One of the questions that's come in there, it's a really good question. Um, why is it capital at risk if it's um, property or asset backed? Um, it's a great question. It's something that we get we do get asked quite often, ultimately because it's an investment. So we're FCA regulated. So um, with that, like like any investment, um, the FCA wants to be clear that, let, let's be honest, ultimately, if the housing market crashes uh, by 90% tomorrow, then you know, the capital is at risk, you'll lose that money. Um, you know, we do obviously look to mitigate these risks with a the credit we go through, the security we provide, um, and also the levels of, uh, of loan we go against the asset. Um, so we do, you know, we do take that very serious. We do obviously follow uh, strip guidelines, but ultimately the FCA do um, do ask all investments to, to make sure it's clear that if, like any investment that you can make, potentially there is a, uh, capital at risk there so so yeah it, it's not just the fact it's this it's it's any investment that that's that will come clear on as long as it's regulated and done properly um so yeah hopefully that's answered that question um so some of the some of the benefits obviously that, that we've just touched on one of the key things this kind of drives to as well is compound interest and compound interest is such a powerful tool um you know we've done a number of webinars just talking about compound interest and um, we've done videos where we talked about how you can become a, an ISA millionaire it's all driven through compound interest so for, for people who are watching this that, that haven't come across it um, your ISA you can put £20,000 per year we've documented how you can get that ISA from £20,000 a year into being worth a million pounds um, and, and tools like this so um, we thought it'd be great to mention it now because um, you know, whether we're in a recession or not in a recession, compound interest is kind of the, the secret source, if you like, in terms of generate, generating and growing true wealth. Um, and yeah, I think um, it'd be good. Well, this man said it himself, didn't he? Compound interest, the eighth wonder of the world. So Albert Einstein, um, I don't know if you want to kind of give us a, a, an overview of how powerful compound interest is, uh, John, just to to break this down a bit further for people so they've got a better understanding of it. Yeah, I think uh, everyone which is on this webinar at some point would have tracked how compound interest works and investments that they've made, including that uh, interest and roll that back up into another investment year after year after year. You start to earn interest on your interest effectively. 
So we, we've put together a very, very simple uh, structure here. So if, if you can see the right hand side, you've got a starting initial balance of £50,000. Every single year you're earning interest. So your first year on that is £6,000 worth of interest over a 12 month period based on a 12% uh, per annum rate. You look then at month, uh, at year 20, and that interest, not looking at the, the two columns to the right, just the interest column alone, that's now 61,000 per annum that's being generated. There hasn't been an increased rate. There hasn't been any additional uh, capital deployed into that investment. It's purely through that investment, receiving a return every single year and then being redeployed into it. Obviously, this is a very simplistic calculation. You then start to look at cash drag, you look at how long it is before you redeploy the funds, you look at if a project is 18 months rather than 12 months or if it's six months, et cetera. But this is based on 12% per annum over a year period, 12 month period. And you see how it builds year after year after year. Taking the total balance over a 20 year period of an investment period with just that one initial deposit to over half a million pounds, it's 544,000. There's nothing crazy been done here. It's just a redeployment of funds. And that's kind of a way that we, we assess our investors' loans because they invest into one deal and then they can do whatever they like with it. Our reinvestment rate is around about 90%. And that's purely because investors understand this power. Within a few years, you're adding thousands of pounds of additional interest. And I hope that does it justice. I could talk about this pretty much all day, every day. And I often do with investors. And you can just see it from one image and one graph of this is the initial balance. This is the end balance, how powerful it really is. And like I said, everyone watching this webinar today will have done this type of calculation before, I'm sure of it. And if you've not, have a look at this. Uh, my details will be at the end. Let's have a chat about how powerful that is. Quite a, 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 you know, separate one. I wish we put this in as a slide now. Do you remember we we put on the uh, the company group uh, about uh, there's a story got that came out about um, oh uh, ten thousand pound investment. Oh, what was it now? The value that it came to. I uh, it was something ridiculous. It was I think it was a ten thousand initial balance over forty years working at. Oh, I, I think they were generating some serious returns. I think they were looking around about 18% per annum. And yeah, it, the balance was in the millions. Yeah, it was absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So, um, so yeah, it, it's a great way to uh, utilise, you know, something that you're not having to, you know, as the, as this these figures show you, you're not having to add funds, add funds, add funds. You're just utilising and utilising the interest that, that's occurred as well. So uh, really powerful thing. Um Leading on to, you know, what we what we've got available in terms of what opportunities there are um, to invest and to have a short term investment um, that gives you uh, the opportunity. I'm going to let uh, let John jump in in terms of John focuses more on sort of source capital and how that works. So, a bit of an instruction to source capital, John. Any further you want to expand on? Yeah, let's uh, let's have a flick through. I've not got any controls to the slides, so when I get to the end i'll say next slide but we've we've talked about a lot of the different things that we offer at source capital and what we are and how we operate so a few of these will just briefly breeze over really so we're a peer-to-peer -peer investment platform uh, which specializes in property development loans within the uk they're always short-term loans which we've talked about uh, we are fca regulated uh, so we became directly authorized by the fca earlier this year Generally, we, we raise around about 15 million per annum. So to date, uh, we've raised just over 36 million, looking to continually grow that. Next year, we'll look to raise 20 million. Uh, so far to date, we've got 100% repayment rate. That is of all capital plus interest uh, that was expected. So we've repaid around about 16 and a half million uh, with about 2.9 million pounds worth of interest on top of that. Uh, all of the additional funds, the difference between uh, the monies raised and the monies repaid are all active in development. Um, every single loan that goes live on the Source Capital platform goes through a rigorous due diligence process. So every single uh, developer and development will go uh, have an independent risk 
surveyor's report completed, which is a valuation report on today's value, what the expected cost throughout the project would be, and what the end value would be, as well as looking at what that time frame is uh, to make sure that it's a suitable time frame for us and for our investors, and it's realistic. And then we work that backwards. So we look at how much the property is going to be worth. We'll look at how much it's worth currently. And then we'll look at how much we're prepared to lend against that or our investors are prepared to lend against that. So we've had a couple of bits pop through. I didn't really uh, see them until they've uh, just gone through. So I've got a couple of questions, oh, which apparently I've, uh, I've answered. So uh, has there been any cases where investors have lost money fully or partially with source capital to date? Um, if so, how long has the company been going? So the, the company has been active for five years, uh, sourced as a group. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer side of the business has been active for around about three and a half years now. So we'll, we did a few uh, smaller loans to start the loan book. And now our average loan is around about a million pounds. And we're looking to raise, like I said, about 20 million next year. Um, to date, as I mentioned, we've not lost any uh, capital for our investors. Uh, and there has been a full repayment of all interest expected as well. So feel free to continue to ask questions as we go through. We're, we're very familiar with going through these webinars and often we breeze over points that some new investors or new viewers uh, would like a little bit further of a description on. So if there's anything that we think or you think, can we just elaborate on, please do pop a question in and we'll run through it for you. Uh, so yeah, next slide, Steve. Yeah, just to, to add on to that as well, as a group, as a, a business, we've been operating for over five years. So um, initially, we, we grew the franchise side and then introduced the capital side and we rolled out rolled out the different business from there. So, but yeah, no, excellent. Um, why invest with source capital? So uh, there's many reasons why our investors choose to choose source capital. Um, and one of the main reasons is that we're secured by first charge. There's many different platforms out there and many different investment opportunities that aren't secured by first charge, which, again, as we talked about earlier, it's that right for repayment before anybody else. That means that your capital is repaid before the developer takes their profit. You're repaid before any other lender in that chain, if there are any other lenders. Uh, generally, with a source capital loan, you'll be the, the only lender within uh, that chain. The other reason why they do that, why they invest with source is that we offer up to 12% per annum as a rate of return. And when you look across the market for first charge investments, you're generally looking around about the eight, nine percent mark. Uh, we're a few percent points above that. And again, when you start to look at that over a number of year, years, three percent on one year doesn't sound like a huge amount. But if you do a compound interest calculator on 9% uh, per annum or 8% per annum, opposed to a 12% per annum, the difference over that time period is phenomenal. And you can do that tax-free. You can do that through a, a two tax wrappers, really. You can do that through a SAS pension, which we allow investments for, or you can do that through an IF ISA, so an Innovative Finance ISA. Again, on our resources page, you'll be able to see these webinars that we've done previously. You'll be able to read blogs about them. We could talk about that all day as well of how you can gain tax-free returns. And there's never any fees for our investors to invest, whether that be uh, legal fees from the platform side, whether it be uh, IF ISA fees as an ISA manager, whether it's just standard uh, investment fees that you'll see with other platforms and other different uh, vehicles of investments. We don't charge anything to our investors. Yeah, excellent. Excellent stuff, cool. We can pop through to the next slide if you want, unless you've got anything to add on that, Steve. It's pretty much self-explanatory on that one. No, the, no, the think, current uh, project that we've got. Uh, oh, go cool, sorry, mate. I was going to say I don't think there is anything else. I'd, uh, I was just going to introduce obviously the the latest project. So, but yeah, if you, if you want to give everyone a bit of an overview of the the opportunity, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So we we've got one active development that'll be our last active in, uh, development now up until the end of the year. So it's a project called Victoria Seaview. It's a conversion from a 32 bedroom uh, hotel into 13 two bedroom properties. So the, the total loan amount that we're looking to raise is just over 1.68 million with a loan to value of 
against a GDV, so gross development value of 2.8 million. We're talking slightly technical property terminology. Uh, GDV, gross development value, what the done up value or end value of that property will be. Uh, and then the loan to value of that is how much is being raised or what the total loan amount is against what that, uh, that GDV is. The loan term on the project is 18 months. So with the, uh, the project, there'll be a period for the build and then there'll be a period for, in this instance, it'll be a sale. So the exit will be a sale on the open market or a sale to uh, an investor database that are looking to potentially buy investment uh, properties. And then the same structures that we've talked about in terms of the security, we've not yet uh, mentioned that with Source Capital, you get a number of different security structures in place. We've talked about personal guarantees briefly. We've talked about company debentures, uh, borrowers' equity and collateral warranties, which we've not spoken about. But with Source Capital, you get all of them included with a first legal charge. So there's additional layers of security throughout that, uh, that development. So that kind of gives uh, an overview of it. Steve, obviously, you're the, the developer on this project. Uh, any bits of information we're sharing in terms of the location, in terms of the style of development uh, that you would like to give? Yeah, I mean, th this particular project, to give people an overview um, of how we found this. So this is a previously a B&B. &B. Um, it's on Queen's Parade. Um, which is basically the beach front. So you open the front door and you're just looking at the beach, absolutely stunning. Um, we've took it all the way through planning permission. It's got lots of off-road parking at the other side of the building. Um, absolutely fantastic views. The apartments that be the planning permission for, I think it's 12 apartments off the top of my head, might be 13 actually, um, is ultimately, I think all of them except for two have sea views, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, we, we've, we've done this on the basis of the figures that you're talking about are bricks and mortar figures. But in reality, um, there's such a demand for serviced accommodation units in this location that if you start applying that to this, then the GDV is much, much higher and the, the return rates are, are a great opportunity for investors. That's why potentially the end sale could just be to an investor block and, and, and taking it that way. Um, in terms of conversion, We've done lots of projects like this. So if anyone's kind of followed us through social media, et cetera, we'll see lots, lots of conversion projects taken place and completed. Um, there's nothing particularly unusual about it. Um, it's it's just being stripped back to brick and, uh, and, and you know, rejigged. There's not a lot of structural work, which is fantastic. There's very, very little structural work, actually, that's, that's been done. We've had a full structural report, um, asbestos report, et cetera, as part of the, the due diligence and going through the process. Um, so yeah, so really excited about the project. The like, location, absolutely beautiful. Um, good size apartments, which is the next thing. Um, no studios, so quite a few ticks in the boxes in terms of we're also working off kind of, in my view, a worst case scenario of valuation because, you know, the, it's the bricks and mortar when realistically we, we, we should be able to achieve a lot more. So should give, give comfort to investors. And, you know, as you said, they've got the security with first charge, et cetera, against the property. Um, but that's obviously something that if somebody's interested and would like to know more, definitely need to, to contact you and, and have a chat with you about it. Yeah, and obviously the, the webinar is how to invest with high inflation and potentially moving into a recession. What challenges have you had with this development? Have you had any down valuations? Have you had uh, trouble finding contractors? Have you had any issues with the potential supply chain moving into it? Uh, what what have you come against so far with this development? Anything yeah, that's, I mean, that's come out I mean, of the blue? Yeah, the, the key thing, I mean, I think any sort of property that's been valued um, recently is facing a down valuation. So this, this was down valued. We expect the GDV to be a lot higher. Um, the project still works even at 60% loan to GDV, which is fantastic. But ultimately, you know, we feel we can achieve a lot more with it, even though the, the profit margin is very healthy. Um, the, the the builder that we're we're using has actually done one about ten doors down approximately. We've been around that building, we've seen it, we've been working in for about mm, probably about ten months. Um, so that that's really encouraging. What we what we found over the past few weeks is actually some of the prices and materials are coming down, uh, and we're expecting that to continue next year, um, which is great because it, it gives us a little bit more flexibility. We've not applied that yet to. Um, to the bill cost because the bill cost has 
a contingency built in. So ultimately, we, we're looking at that that that's a bonus and that that will help with the uh, any further contingency. Um, but no, you know, quite quite straightforward. Um, as I say, we did renegotiate with the purchase price because the uh, down valuation of GDV, but but that worked out quite well as well. So um, so yeah, they're they're the main kind of. Um, yeah, they're the main points. I know a question that's just coming about GDV. Um, so to explain the GDV, you're absolutely right. That's the value that once this building's converted is is expected to sell at. So you can get two. Typically, you, you can generate two GDVs. You can generate a GDV, which is bricks and mortar, which means just as a, a property. So that's what this is. So this is uh, the GDV of this one is 2.8 million. So once this, this has been converted. It, it should be worth as a property 2.8 million. You can also get a commercial GDV where they work off the rental income. So that the the commercial GDV for this might be 3.4 million, um, which is higher. But you know you, you potentially taking a risk there that are you going to get a commercial mortgage or are you going to get a commercial buyer, et cetera, et cetera. So it's better to wait to operate on the the more sort of um, secure side and err on the side of caution, really. I suppose. Yeah, and just to explain that a, a little bit further as well, so that 2.8 is split over 13 different uh, properties. So there'll be 13 two-bedroom properties. So just as an average, there'll be around about 215000 per property. So yeah. rather than needing to sell it as one asset at 2.8 million, that'll be split. That'll be then sold on as individual units. Yeah, fantastic. Excellent. If anyone's got any questions about the project or you know, security and that, please feel free to, to jump in. Um, anybody's looking for further information about source capital, how we operate, what we do, our due diligence, et cetera, then again, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I can see a question just popped up now. All right, just a thank you. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, and yeah, that, that's it really. I think we're just in time there. I think we just hit the hour mark, which is fantastic. It's unusual for me and you, John. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so... Yeah, if anybody does have any questions, if you'd like to understand more, there are uh, videos and guides on our website. You can go on there, you can download them for free. You can email us at capital at source.co. You can contact us directly uh, through head office or alternatively, John's contact details are below. So john.wilson at source.co. It's more of our number as well. So feel free to reach out with any queries or questions um, about you know the investments or even if you just wanted to speak to somebody about how um you know how they can um uh, you know where the market is or their thoughts and how other investors are reacting to it uh, one question that's just come in then how can people actually invest so there are three ways that you can invest into a, a, one of our loans you can invest with cash so as a savings etc you, you can uh, invest in that with that way you can invest with an isa so whether you have an isa set up you can transfer that in or you can create a new isa and again john will be able to guide you on that or the third one, which John touched on earlier, is the SAS pensions. So if you have a SAS pension, you're able to invest with your SAS pension as well. And again, if you speak to John, he'll be able to give you a bit more information in terms of how that happens and, and the process that's in place there to help you. Um, so the three ways in total. Two of them are tax-free, which is your ISA or your IF ISA and your SAS pension. Um, or if you're just looking to use uh, investments, whether it's savings. We have quite a large portion of our investors that are companies. They've got money sat in their company. Um, but they don't want to draw down because they pay tax. So ultimately, they invest it, and it just obviously helps build and build, and goes back into the business. Um, and then just a, another one that's come through: Can anyone invest? The investments are specific to high net worth or sophisticated investors. Uh, but if you send over a uh, email to myself, I'll send through our website. You can have a look through. You can go through the the onboarding process and during that registration you'll be able to uh, classify yourself as an investor uh, going through that process. Yeah, fantastic. So yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate you all staying on and watching this uh, webinar. We will follow this up with the recording and share it around so everybody can have a look and digest in your own time. And uh, yeah, we wish you all the best and success for the rest of this year and in the new year. And uh, look forward to working with you hopefully in the future. Thank uh, you all very much. Then. One quick question has popped in there. Let's see if we've got time. Why does a developer use source at six percent loans value, twelve percent plus interest rate, and then go for a property development lender who can give them seven percent loans value 
probably charge around eight to nine percent interest. Oh, what a question <laughs> to finish on! Yeah, yeah, opening <laughs> a can of worms there, Graham. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I think um, we can ask this question quite a bit in terms of, you know what, you can get um, bridging loans for 6% and, and things like that. And in reality, it's very difficult to, you know, we, we I've been in the property sector for, you know, 20 odd years. And, you know, the reality of it is actually even even other bridging companies that I've utilized and things like that, you still end up paying about 12% plus fees. So there's no, you know, there are the the there are products out there. Typically, you've got to put down a huge amount, so it's maybe fifty percent, sometimes sixty percent uh, deposits. Um, but generally speaking, you often find that there's a lot of clickbait out there where people advertise rates to say, you know, we'll lend you money and it's at point, you know, five percent per uh, per month, etc. Actually, when you go through all the details, you go through all the process. There's very few people that do it. There's also a big issue in terms of in the development world where there are a lot of bridging companies that, you know, are balancing monies, balancing uh, their own books and hoping for monies to be repaid so they can lend it straight back out. So a lot of scare stories out there where people have gone all the way through to um, exchange and waiting to draw down funds and the funds just don't come because the bridging company haven't been repaid back on a loan or there are other issues within the pipeline. So. Um, it's a great question, and we do get asked that quite a bit. Why do people pay 12%? 12% is the average rate for uh, bridging companies. Um, you will see clickbait emails, et cetera, of, of opportunities that are cheaper. But in reality, um, that, that's the market that we're in. Would you say that's a fair answer? John, anything you'd add to that? Yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of a funny one to answer from your point of view. You are a borrower paying that rate. So it, it's quite it an easy one. be cheaper. Definitely <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's not much that I can add to it. The the only thing that I can kind of allude to is interest rates are increasing month. Well, every quarter at the minute, interest rates are going up. Uh, source capitals remained at twelve percent. Those rates with bridging companies, with development lenders, they are consistently changing, and they are moving closer to that higher rate. Um, so we're not a million miles away from the norm in terms of the rate and. We offer that to our investors straight away. We don't take huge fees. We don't take any fees from that 12%. We take slightly uh, additional fees on an entrance and exit fee, but we don't charge any early repayment fees. Um, there's no caveats to what we do. It's very straightforward lending. Yeah, another question that's come as well, you know, minimum to invest. So it's a thousand pounds of minimum to invest. Um, you know, can you only invest in one project per year? No, not at all. So the structure is, you know, you've got twenty thousand pound IFI allowance because you're talking there about the uh, the IFI So that twenty thousand pound could mean that you put a thousand pound into twenty different projects, or you know, it could mean that you put five thousand pound into four projects. So it depends ultimately how big your overall pot is and what you're looking to achieve. Questions like that are really good, and what I'd say is arrange to jump on a call with John because yeah, he's going to help understand what your whole investment goal is what you're looking to achieve um, and where else you're investing so it can kind of all tie in together. And they're the key things. Hope that's answered all your questions, guys. Really appreciate them. Um, have a fantastic evening and wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Take care. Perfect. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.